we are live yes mazzy can you feel the electricity we're launching greenhouse tonight oh okay i think the live audience is probably caught up by now Whew. welcome to mixing night i am your host ken lewis greenhouse pre-sale starts right now i don't you don't even it's okay Street date is next mixing night, September 29th. Uh, but you guys can buy Green Haas right now at our new website, mixingnightaudio.com. 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 We have a plug in company. Holy cow, we have a plug in company. And a, hey, you. And a portion of. And a portion of the sales from Greenhouse will go towards funding this show, improving this show, and growing this free Mixing Night broadcast for all of you. So, I ask you as my ambassadors, and you guys are killers, uh, if you love Greenhouse the way I love Greenhouse, please tell people about it, tell everybody about it, and if you notice the show getting even better over the next few months, Pat yourself on the back because we all have Green Haas and you guys and girls to thank for it. We, we've been working on this thing for like nine months. It's been insane, but it's been so much fun. Uh, this would have never happened without the show. Thank you all for the inspiration. Truly, we are just absolutely thrilled with the way it's come out. And I think you guys are going to love it too. And I'll let you see in here tonight on the show. I'm going to show you what it does and how it does. A lot of people are asking like, what does it do? Why? I'll show you. Don't worry. We literally started the plugin company to answer the simple question, how do we keep doing Mixing Night for free? That's how the plugin came about. So there you go. Okay, on to Mixing Night. I'm your host, Ken Lewis. I have the weirdest resume in the entire music industry. I just got my 104th RIAA gold record. Woo, the hits just keep coming this month. I just did a mix for Spraga Benz and Bounty Killer, uh, a song called Remember to Pray. And they have permitted me to show you guys um, examples from it on my show. I showed you guys some stuff two weeks ago, so if you missed that, restream it. It was pretty awesome. Uh, I'm going to show you tonight the mix bus and the bass management for Spraga Ben's Bounty Killer. Okay, bass management for those two. All right, tune in for that. Um, when is that coming up? That's coming up... Uh Fuck, pretty early. I think maybe 30 or 40 minutes into the broadcast, I'm going to tackle that. Okay, get your questions ready. I have a special guest tonight. Mixing Night co-founder Dom Ravinius is joining me finally on the show at 9.30 to talk about how Dominic, me, and Lori launched Mixing Night during lockdown last year and why we launched a plug-in company now, probably right before the next lockdown. Uh, Dom also worked with me on the brand new single from Alicia Keys and Sway Lee titled La La. Um, uh, me and Dom are credited as big band. And, uh, and we are a big band. Me and Dom are a big band. Um, my last musical credit with Dominic was the Eminem's most recent album. Uh, my credit was uh, orchestra, and Dom's credit was uh, like percussion and brass. Um, so, you know, we play real instruments around here. Maybe on a rolly, but, but still, they're real. Kind of. Um, Dominic also produced the awesome new single from friend of the show, Gracie Wood, called You Ain't My Boo. And later on, Dom will show you guys all of the production techniques that uh, he used. He's uh, working in Logic. So we, we got some Logic stuff on the show tonight. Uh, he's going to show you production techniques from the record. Great production work on that, Dom. And please support Gracie Wood on her socials. I think it's Gracie Wood Official. And stream You Ain't My Boo. Stream it. You Ain't My Boo. Uh, Mixing Night has an Instagram now. It's not only mine, finally. We we joined the 21st century. At Mixing Night Audio. Follow us on Instagram. Tell your friends, please. At Mixing Night Audio. We have a plug-in company now. Holy cow. Uh, we're going to try and obviously continue to bring you guys awesome content and keep it uh, getting even better and better and keep Mazzy from clawing my arm to pieces during the broadcast. <laughs> Mazzy is in rare form. Mazzy didn't get a walk today and when Mazzy doesn't get a walk Mazzy is really really angry so she's she, she's probably gonna be on me tonight okay did you know did you know that right now studio rats like me 
Yeah, 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 definitely. Studio rats like me and you from literally all over the world are tuning in live, probably from your studios. Um, definitely let us know where you're coming from. Drop us a comment on the comments uh, and post up, rep, you know, represent for your city. Let us know and jump on the chat roll. Interact with this awesome, truly superb Mixing Night community. Uh, they are really great. And uh, in between shows, you can follow us over at Discord Mixing Night. Make sure you got those speakers up tonight or good headphones fired up because tonight we have Sprint Mixing. Question answering, plug-in company launching, mix busing, base managing, Marcus Manderson mistering, beat challenge resulting, ear training. Oh, you are not ready for ear training tonight. <sighs> Tap in a friend. <sighs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Tap in a friend. Worksheets in the description. Grab your worksheets for ear training now. Go pull a friend into the broadcast, challenge them, and uh, it's I think it's best of 27 points tonight. Uh, there's nine examples. Your training tonight is going to be, uh, what the heck is broken? Ken, what the heck is broken? That's going to be ear training tonight. So um, tune in. That's about, I think, the 9 o'clock hour, so about an hour from now. Um, total of 27 points is going to be really fun, real world shit around here. Okay, okay. Ugh, got carried away, sorry. Uh <laughs> Um, oh, yeah, we hit 10,000 subscribers on YouTube on uh, our Mixing Night channel. Holy cow. Thank you so much to everybody. Uh, all of the subscribers, everybody who's followed the show and, and spread the word. And, and Man, that's really awesome. Uh, we wouldn't be launching a plug-in company without you, and uh, I hope we bring you awesome content for years to come. Okay, the Sprint Mix tonight is the new single by friend of the show, Jad Saad. And his new single is called Sophie. Uh, he just dropped it. Please go support Jod Sod Sophie. Stream it. Uh, you know, share it. Whatever. Um, and uh, what else? There's no video for it yet. But the last song that we did, Mojave, has an awesome video. Uh, I sprint mixed it on the show. I did a breakdown. I'll probably do a, a production breakdown of Sophie at some point. Um, for you guys, so you can kind of get more in depth on how uh, Jod did. I don't know who 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 produced it. I don't know who produced it. I'm sorry. Um, anyway, I'm gonna sprint mix it. Uh, why sprint mixing, Ken? I get this question a lot, and sometimes I just gloss over it. But basically, sprint mixing is not about uh, mixing as fast as you can. Um, it kind of is. Like if you were a front of house mixer, or if you were mixing a live broadcast or a jingle or something like that, you need to be a lightning fast mixer. You need to trust your gut and trust your instincts. You need to put a fader where you think it belongs with your ear, leave it there, move on to the next, 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 make five or six or seven decisions quickly in a row about where things go. Then you back up and you evaluate everything that you have just done and you listen and you go, okay, what does the song still need? Okay, now I still need five or six or seven or eight moves. And then you pause and you back up and you listen again. So it's about shedding the technology focusing on the music and the song coming out of the speakers, reacting to that, and doing what that needs at lightning fast speed so that you forget about all of these second guessing and things you just, you don't have time to think. So without further ado, uh, I'm going to set 10 minutes on the clock and I'm going to set our heavy metal lights going. I mean, you got a sprint mix with some heavy metal lights and of course a mask. Man, it is still COVID out there. I'm about to get my third shot in October. I am ready to be boosted up. Uh, I'm definitely not going to travel again until I get my third booster. Uh, everybody, please stay safe out there. Still a thousand Americans a day are dying. A thousand Americans a day are dying of COVID. A completely preventable disease at this point. So um, please get the shot and uh, mask up. Even uh, I'm, I'm out there 24-7 masked up in public. And, uh, and mixing night the same. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. You guys are the most awesome community. Uh, this is Jod Sod Sophie. I am Ken Lewis. This is Mixing Night. And uh, I am so glad you have joined us. Um, stick around. It's going to be a fantastic night. We launched Green Hoss. Oh, my God. We launched Green Hoss. I can't even... Okay. Running out of time, Ken. Here we go. Ten minutes on the clock. Jod Sod Sophie.
trash when they used to be trophy We got everything we wanted now It's like you don't even know me da -da -da -da. Gotta call someone else when I need you to hold me da -da 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 -da. You owe me For all of the girls that I let slip out of my I wish for you everything you deserve Not my place to judge, I leave that to the universe Big sweater Two of those with my new I actually this vocal that I'm working on right now that says LV3 dry I took um, all the effect and plugins and everything off of so in addition to a 10 minute sprint I also have to fix an entire lead vocal track all of the nights in a five-star New York hotel room Where I stay lonely Girl, you know you owe me For the shows I had on me. We broke up and you went straight out with the homie That's some shit that almost broke me, Sophie Oh, oh, oh me For all of the times that I let you fuck on my sleep All of the guys that I know gon' follow my lead all of the nights in a five star new you owe me for all of the times that I let you fuck on my sleep. All of the guys that I know gon' follow my lead. All of the nights in a five star New York hotel room where I stay lonely. Girl, you know you owe me for the shows I had. All of the had on me. We broke up and you went straight out with the homie. That's some shit that almost broke me, Sophie. Oh. I wish for you. My place to judge, I leave that to the universe. Big sweater, two of those with my new girl looking like I need the kudos. Oh, me for all of the times that I let you fuck up my weed. All of the lies you don't think I know you told me. All of the nights in a five star Bombay hotel room. Now you, now you're the ones I had. All of the had on me. We broke up and you went straight out with the homie. 
That's some shit that almost broke me, Sophie. Oh, oh. That's some shit that almost broke I had all of me. All of me. We broke up and you went straight out with the homie. That's some shit that almost broke me, Sophie. Oh, oh. Bottles of wine in the trash when they used to be trophies. Now I gotta call someone else when I need you to hold me. Oh me, for all of the times that I let you fuck up my weed. All of the lies you don't think I know you told me. All of the nights in a five star Bombay hotel room. Now you know. Oh me, for all of the times that I let you fuck up my weed. All of the lies you don't think I know you told me. All of the nights in a five star Bombay hotel room. Now you know. You fuck up my weed. You know you owe me for the shows I had. All of me. Oh, me. Girls that I let slip out of my reach. They graduated and moved upstate or South Beach. All of the nights in a five star LA hotel room where I stayed lonely. Girl, you know you owe me for the planes and the things and the time I could have gave my family. Now you're calling me just. For the planes and the things and the time I could have gave my family For the planes and the things and the time I could have gave my family Now you're calling me just to tell me what you don't feel I wish for you everything you deserve Not my place to judge, I leave that to the universe Big sweater Two of those with my new girl looking like I need the kudos Oh me For all of the times that I let you fuck up my weed All of the lies you don't think I know you told me All of the nights in a five star Bombay hotel room Now you Now you're the one that's lonely And you following my life real closely Wondering if you Come back in and hold me. No love, I'm good. Please don't try to phone me, Sophie. Bottles of wine in the trash when they used to be trophies. We got everything we wanted now. It's like you don't even know me. That's a little off. You owe me for all of the times that I let you fuck on my sleep. All of the guys that I know gon' follow my lead. All of the nights in a five star New York hotel room where I stay lonely. Girl, you know you owe me for the shows I had. All of We broke up and you went straight out with the homie. That's some shit that almost broke me, Sophie. Bottles of wine in the trash when they used to be trophies. It's Ken Lewis. Welcome to Mixing Night. That is Jod Sod Sophie. I love that song. That was such a fun song to mix and sprint. Uh, I'm going to save my sprint. I'm going to print that later. Uh, whew, action packed show tonight. I'm going to show you some greenhouse stuff. Uh, where greenhouse examples? Uh oh, do I need to? Nope, I think I quit that. Uh, oh God. <laughs> I'm not sure if I can launch uh, Pro Tools and Logic at the same time on this computer yet. So we're about to find out. Um, but anyway, let me take a question in the meantime while the... Oh, is this... Wow, that's fast. Let me see if it's playing back anywhere. Hang on, everybody. Oh, come on. Ooh. You guys can hear that. Okay. I'm going to play you guys some greenhouse examples before I get into questions. Uh, and fire away on the chat roll if you got any other questions about greenhouse or about anything else, really. I'm open book tonight. Uh, fire away. Uh, 
Dominic is on the chat roll harvesting questions in real time and throwing them up on a screen. He's not throwing them up. He's putting them up on a screen uh, in front of me so that I can see them. So I actually am getting fed your questions tonight. Hey, baby girl, why don't you relax? The treats are going to flow tonight. No worries. Okay, I'm going to put, I'm going to show you guys a little bit of what Greenhouse can do. And obviously, most of these settings are a little bit more on the very, um, uh, affected side. Uh, but, but I want to show you all the different flavors that this thing can do. So I'm just going to let this thing roll, show you each different thing, tell you a bit about what it does. Let me first, let me just tell you what Greenhouse does. Okay. First off, what Greenhouse does is just create vibe. It, that's what it does. Uh, do you notice that there are no parameters on any of the knobs or sliders? And that's very on purpose because I never want you to uh, think about the number ratio of where you are. I want you to listen and dial it in and figure out what your ears tell you to like. Uh, and and the responses so far to that method have been just really awesome. So it's a saturator. The sundial is basically a saturator. We have three different types of saturation, infrared, ultraviolet, and gamma rays. Um, the two colors are switched right now. They'll be, infrared will actually be red. We're not that clever. Um, but uh, the infrared is basically kind of like a even distortion. Ultraviolet's more of this like really warm, rich distortion. And gamma is like Hulk smash. So... Uh, the heat button feeds you, you know, more or less, you kind of get the sundial effect, but one of our favorite things. So the GUI, big shout outs on the GUI to, uh, where is it? Cliff Sims, the GUIest. So I'm going to show you, uh, uh, I'm going to play you a song from Cliff Sims tonight. And uh, I'm going to show you uh, tonight why we got this awesome GUI designed by Cliff Sims Company Telegraph Creative in Birmingham, Alabama. Um, I basically traded Cliff uh, production on a song for him in exchange for them designing our graphic user interface for Greenhouse. Lori did the initial design for Greenhouse. Lori named it. Um, my wife, Lori, uh, running cameras right now. Um, she named it and she did the mock-up of all of basically everything that you see is kind of her starter idea and then we handed it off to the to the super pros. Um, Cliff's company just won like three Emmy Awards. So <laughs> these people throw down and Cliff throws down too. He's a bit of a Forrest Gump um, uh, in all the best ways. Anyway, so it's a saturator into uh, Haas Effect. It's not, I mean, it can be Haas Effect, but it's also kind of somewhere between Haas Effect and Slap Delays. Um, but the idea is uh, that, uh, you know, you get a whole bunch of different choices for how to spread things out. And to me, the, the watering can is the most powerful tool on this entire plugin. Most people think about delay starting like that. And I'm thinking about delay starting more like that and adding, keeping the center intact so you don't lose your phase coherency. And then you add in side fill uh, with the wet dry knob and it can give you these awesome, awesome ambiences, you'll hear. Uh, and then uh, this trims high frequency off of the uh, delay um, if you want that uh, trimmed. Fertilizer is, uh, let's see if you figure out fertilizer. Um, the daisies are all, these are different uh, modulation. The flower collection is all different modulators of different ilks. And uh, they're su like, the thing that I love about this thing is it's just super musical. And uh, like, for instance, violet sounds radically different than daisy, but they both work in really cool ways on different things. And this entire plugin is meant for you to just click around hear what it sounds like and enjoy it and without further ado fucking listen green hogs
Yep. So that's a flavor of what it does with drum loops. Now let me show you some vocals. One of the things that really amazed me most about when we set out to make this plugin, I didn't set out to make it this versatile. I really, really thought it would be like, uh, maybe I use it one, one instance in a mix. And what I find is I'm using like fucking five and six and seven instances in a mix because it does so many different things in different ways that it just becomes my crafting tool for vibe. Uh, so here is a friend of the show, Sugar Jesus, featuring KRN, uh, Temptation, which I've sprint mixed here before. The first uh, two lines are uh, as mixed, and each of these is a different take on what Green Haas does to a uh, regular lead vocal. Uh, the only thing different than this to this is Green Haas. So uh, here's Temptation, Sugar Jesus. Come That's a taste of it on uh, lead vocals, which I've been using it on lead vocals all the time. Uh, in fact, I got, so I used it on the Scrizzly Adams 28 uh, acoustic remix, which is just acoustic guitar and vocal. And I sent, uh, and I used Green Haas on both Scrizzly's lead vocal and on his guitar, and that's it. And he, and he hears, and I didn't tell him what I did, and he hears the mix and he calls me up and he's like, dude, what the fuck did you do to my vocal? That shit sounds amazing, that's gotta be the new template, whatever you did, that's gotta be the new sound. I'm like, yo bro, that's Greenhouse. And he's like, dope, whatever you need, I got you. <laughs> so, that's the kind of responses we've been getting. I'm gonna play you one more. Here's a AJ Smith guitar. Uh, pink is uh, AJ, green is diff three different takes on Greenhouse, and then we're moving on. <laughs> Wobbly. That's Greenhouse. Man, I really think we got a winner. I've been giving it out um, uh, to some of my top level mixer friends, and the responses that we've been getting back like Bob Horn loves it, uh, Eric J loves it. Andrew Whooper loves it. Um, it's <laughs> it's really incredible to like work so hard for so long on something that you hope is going to be great, and then turns out it is, and everybody's responding. So thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, show, for the inspiration. Honestly, people, without you guys, without you guys basically demanding that the show is so much fun for us to do, it's become the thing that we didn't know that we needed to do. Um, and we absolutely love putting on the show and the plugin came from answering the question, how do we keep the show going? And, uh, you know, after vaccination, we can travel and see clients. How do we keep the show going and justify the hours? So greenhouse, baby. So, uh, you're helping fund the show. Uh, if you are buying greenhouse, you can get the presale now. It's available September 29th. Sorry to be so silly tonight, but oh man, come on. Okay. Uh, questions. Oh, you know, let me get out some shout outs tonight. Um, I, I have been told that Flip Matrix is tuning in. Uh, Flip is an old uh, producer, mixer friend of mine. He just did a Lupe Fiasco mix. Um, I think it was Lupe Fiasco. And uh, yeah, f uh, yeah, he's a fucking dope mix engineer. And his, his students should be uh, tuning in. Shout outs to Angel, Juba, Kyle Townsend, and Audrey Montoya. Thanks to the Archdale Community Center in Boston. Oh, Boston. I went to school at Berkeley. Um, Berkeley College of Music in Boston. I actually just talked to the Berkeley folks today. Uh, um, Rob Jasko and, and uh, Dan Thompson up at the uh, mp &E department. Man, they got really great facilities up there. They, I got to do some master classes. Um, I got to do some master classes at, at Berkeley. I think in 2019 they've invited me back at some point, but, you know, pandemic. So 
<laughs> so we'll see. Um, you know, uh, more f f greenhouse shout outs. Um, the, uh, the whole Telegraph creative team for doing the GUI. Um, is it Dave Thompson, I think? And uh, Shannon, I can't remember Shannon's last name. Uh, Gary Grutzek, the coder on this. Uh, Gary is the lead coder on this. I mean, genius level. This has been such a smooth process with us. We have just the most awesome team in the history of plug-in manufacturing teams ever assembled for a new company. We have it right here at Mixing Night Audio. Yes. So, me, Dominic, Gary, Lori, man, we have been grinding on this thing for nine months. I'm so glad to have it out in the world and uh, have you guys check it out. Um, let's see. I'm going to field some questions. John asks, hey, Ken, are you mixing in Atmos yet? Oh, John, John, John. Do you know how confusing mixing Atmos is? Oh, my God. I'm learning. I'm, I am moving towards Atmos at breakneck speed. I will be mixing in Atmos as soon as humanly possible. Um, I, uh, plan on getting very serious with it. Um, I just bought speakers for this room. I just got IK MTMs for this room. Uh, and I think the, the ceiling satellites are going to be iLoud micros. Um, I mean, the room won't certify, but, uh, I'm going to build a bigger room to do bigger work in. Um, so yes, Atmos is definitely on the plate. Uh, I just got the, the, uh, Avid Matrix, uh, studio interface. I mean, the shit is so complicated, but I'm telling you, Atmos, I think the leap from mono to stereo is slightly more significant than the leap from stereo to Atmos. That's how big I think Atmos is. I could be totally wrong, but I don't think that I am. So, uh, we're, we're going to know in about a year or so, uh, if I'm a savant or a fucking idiot um okay ryan hartnett asks hey ken are you using the i'm oh, speaking of which uh well, i totally missed it are you using the iLoud mtms for an entire dolby atmos setup in this room i'm trying to yes that's uh, just what i uh in my main room no no they're too small for that um but they're great for a small room uh steven asks hey ken i was wondering what speakers you're using uh also um, because I saw you speaking about adding Sing speakers, S-Y-N-G, Sing speakers. Uh, can you talk about what those are? Uh, it's the first time I've heard about them. Um, so the Sing speakers, you're going to have to ask me next time. Uh, they're sending them to me now. A really good friend of mine was raving about them, and he called me up, and he's like, dude, you've got to fucking hear these things. And I was like, um, okay, so I got a pair. I'm waiting for them. If I love them, they stay. If I don't love them, then you know they're too expensive not to uh, <laughs> to, to not love. Um, but the but the reviews on them and and people whose ears I trust have been uh, speaking high praises about the sing stuff. So I'm really interested to to hear what they're throwing down. Um, let's see what time is it? Eight thirty-five. Wow, the time is flying. Uh, um. Hal9000 asks, Hey Ken, how picky should you be finishing songs uh, uh, versus creating and being in creative mode? Um, I think, so as a creator, like basically as a beat maker, I don't think you have to be all things to all people. You don't really need to be a mix engineer. You kind of need to be able to rough mix your stuff okay. And then there's mastering services. There's Ozone 9. There's Lander. Uh, so there's finishing devices that you can use that you don't have to know the mastering portion of it. Oh, iced coffee. I love you. And my wife. And Matthew. Uh, maybe in that order. No. <laughs> uh, where, where, where was I? Um, okay, how... HAL 9000, here's my advice. When you know you're on to something hot, when you're really feeling one of your beats, like, this one is better than the others. I know it. I feel it right here. This one's better than the others. That's the one that you spend all your time on. The others are practice for when you find that beat or, uh, you know, create that beat. All the others are practice. 
when you find that beat that you cooked up that you're like, oh, shit, yes, this one, that's the one you go all in on. Okay, good question. Um, Reggie Marcus asks, hey, Ken, what is the minimum amount of money you would recommend spending for a mobile recording studio? Reggie, I am not the guy to ask. I don't think that way. Um, and I don't research minimum amounts of money to spend. Um, I can tell you what my, uh, um, travel rig is, which is... So, here's a picture of me working in a big SSL room in Tokyo, Japan. And you'll notice that I'm not using the SSL or their speakers or anything the at all. I'm using an Apollo Twin quad and iLoud micros. And uh, I've got my little Samsung T5 SSD, which is absolutely... I can run a 200-track mix off of this little drive right here. It's really incredible. Um, and, uh, and I can use my iPad as a monitor in a real pinch if I need to. I travel with my laptop now, so I've got like a, a you know, Mac, MacBook Pro laptop that's as mirrored as possible to this rig so that if I'm traveling and my assistant is here at the studio, he can send me stuff back and forth um, at will uh, and I can open it up and, and play it. Um, so you know, this, I, this is a little bit more high end, but it depends on what you want. Are you, uh, you know, do you want a travel rig for yourself to make beats, you know, just in a hotel room? Or do you want a travel rig, like, to mix hit records with? Like, this rig right here, I mixed, um, uh, well, it was the, uh, I, I mixed uh, the um, BTS Interlude Shadow, which is like 100 million plus streams on YouTube on the video. Um, on the beach w with headphones on with a, uh, uh, an Apollo um, and MTMs and my um, and my uh, Audis LCD XCs. Um, so you need to, I guess the, the real question is what level do you want to play at? If you want to play at my level, you gotta go. You gotta play at my level. <laughs> if you want to work up to my level, then there's tons of cheaper interfaces actually <laughs> this is interesting um the beat challenge on september 29th uh which is the next show in two weeks time the prizes that are going to be announced for that beach that beat challenge launching that night are going to be Ar new arturia interfaces they're like 99 and 149 dollar two in two out interfaces and uh they're fantastic um at you know that kind of a thing for a travel rig is probably perfect. Um, so I'm going to, uh, I, I think I'm getting them tomorrow. Um, so I'm going to check them out. Obviously, it's not something I would use. I would use the twin. But for you guys, if you want a good interface, we'll put it through its paces and we'll tell you what, uh, you know, what the real deal is on it. Okay, so that's my travel rig. I'm going to show you, um, oh, I got a question from the chat roll, Sam Champagne. What's up, Sam Champagne? She asks, hey, Ken, how can we tell the difference between an Atmos mix and a regular quality stereo mix if we all only have two ears slash stereo perception? Sam, funny you should ask. So um, Atmos in headphones is now possible. Um, seriously, if you're not making your own cold brew, you're just not living. Uh, the, uh, Apple EarPod, AirPod Pros, okay, the AirPod Pro has Atmos capability, and I hate these little ear pod things. I bought the non-Atmos things and took them straight back. They, they don't fit my ear comfortable, I don't like them, but... The fucking Atmos mixes in these little stupid earbuds sound incredible. So if it sounds this good right now with this little crap technology, man, they are going to solve the Atmos for headphones in no time flat. By Christmas next year, everybody is going to be asking for their Atmos headphones because... Here's how it works. So you put in your headphones, um, and they play stereo or Atmos. 
um, and they use a technique called binaural um, encoding to get the Atmos swirling around your head. It's very cool. But in your... Um, so Apple Music, uh, Apple Music has Atmos spatial audio playlists, which are very cool. I've been binging those. Um, and in your Apple Music settings on your phone... Uh, okay, here. Apple Music settings on your phone, there's a Dolby Atmos automatic on or off. Oh. Okay. So, Dolby Atmos. Um, and the other thing that you need to have checked is third from the bottom, sound check. Sound check needs to be on. When sound check is on, then you can switch in real time on the Dolby Atmos page. This is in the settings, not, um, uh, not in the app itself. You can switch in real time between automatic, which uh, kicks you into Atmos if it's an Atmos mix, and off, which switches you back into stereo. So you can really level match, hear the difference between the stereo mix and the Atmos mix. And uh, let me just tell you. Now, the stereo mix is always going to have um, its magic. There's, It is always going to have its place because it has a vibe. Everybody is used to hearing everything in stereo. But for me, the immersiveness when I started listening to Atmos mixes and the surround sound just envelops you and it to me it's it's the way we all want to hear our stuff when we're creating like i want to be in the middle of the song that i'm creating i don't want the song coming at me i want to feel like i'm in the middle of it and the song is i'm the fucking ringmaster and you know controlling all that's that's atmos and that's what uh, the power of that thing kind of gives you so i'm really interested to see uh what i can do with it and um the creative avenues that i find to take it down i'm really interested in that um i'm interested to see if i have any interest at all in film and tv or if i stick only to music um i'm interested to see if there's gonna be enough of an income stream at all that the investment is going to be worth it. I mean, plenty of people are like, oh, nah, I'm good. <laughs> and I'm just like, let's go! So, we'll see. <laughs> One of us is right. But, here's my argument for Atmos. Apple Music, about four months ago, if you're not aware announced two things. Lossless audio, which is high quality audio. And they also announced uh, Dolby Atmos as their surround spatial audio standard. So if you extrapolate that up, what that means is the biggest creative company in the entire world who also controls the number two, probably soon to be number one streaming service in the entire world, um, just adopted that format as their standard and they're building products and product entire product lines to feed that uh, audio standard so their video games their uh, their uh, oculus killer headset that's coming is going to probably be ringed with atmos speakers um you know all of this stuff uh Apple's basically said like now is now is the time you're you know <laughs> and uh I don't know why you're showing that to me but that's pretty cool um I don't know why this is taking so long to boot up either I'm sorry about that I'm trying to get Spraga Bounty uh booted up here um but yeah so that's kind of that's kind of how I feel about Atmos is like uh oh oh no come on <laughs> We're having technical difficulties, but I'm going to keep uh, spitballing until Ben Ellery from the chat roll asks, Hey, Ken, I've heard audiophiles talk about needing a, a digital audio converter, a DAC. Uh, can you um, explain why it matters or if an interface covers that job? I think you're talking about... Are you talking about an, a DAC for Atmos or are you talking about just a DAC for listening to audio? Because I think that's... If you're just listening to your stereo mix, man, I MP3s sound fine to me, streaming sounds fine to me. 
Uh, any everybody that gets caught up in this blah, 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 man i'm listening to the song i am not listening to the depth of the mix and the blah, 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 blah. i'm listening to the song that's what i'm listening to um and the fucking computer is completely locked up right now this is not good i mean i can still do the show without the computer but it's going to be a little bit boring uh i can't go to marcus because the computer is literally locked up um hey bae look look out look out i got it all right, um, <laughs> give me a second. Look out, Maz. Oh, all right. Let's see what we can do about this. Probably not a whole lot. Okay, well, fire up another question on the, uh, on the screen for me while I shut this computer down and reboot it and keep the show going because the show must go on. Mazzy, oh, you want treats? Mazzy is just a little treat. What'd you get back? Get, get back. Get, you gotta get into the, tr you gotta get into the Mazzy cam so you look just the cutest. Oh, all right, fire up that Mazzy cam while the computer's rebooting itself. Jeez, welcome to mixing night. It's always something, but you know, yeah, that's a, it's we're running a live show around here. Sometimes you just gotta get, you know, crawl around the studio. Oh, take a moment, drink some iced coffee. You see where we get our humor for Green Hoss, right? You see that. You see where we get it. <laughs> that's, that's Lori. That's, I mean, it's me too. It's totally, totally me too, but it's Lori. It, she's a fucking goofball. Uh, um, hey, I can give some shout outs while I'm booting things back up. Big shout out to Bob Horn, Eric J, Andrew Whooper, you guys. <laughs> oh my God. The the responses that I've been getting for this thing, uh, Ken Pooch Van Druten, um, I know I'm going to forget a bunch of people uh, off the top of my head, but I've just been really amazed at the um, responses that I'm getting uh, from a lot of my really incredibly talented engineer friends uh, and mixer friends and... and uh, everybody on this thing. It's been really incredible. Um, I'm gonna... I'm scared to try Spraga Bounty. Uh, I am... Okay, let me talk about this for a second. So, while I'm, while I'm trying to do other things... Uh, no, I don't want to create. How about I... Okay, please work. Um, Secret Sonics 112. Where did it go? Come on. Secret Sonics 112. Uh, this is um, uh, Ben Wallach's. Um, why can't I remember his name right now? Yeah, Ben Wallach. Um, uh, ben Wallach's podcast, uh, Secret Sonics. We just did it. Um, so Google that. I had a blast with him. He's a really cool guy. We had a great conversation, about an hour long, just nerded out completely. Um, <laughs> and uh, 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 yeah, you know. So. Uh, check that out if you want. What else is going on? You know what else is going on. Uh, what else is going on is... Um, come on. Uh, Steppo from the chat roll asks, Hey Ken, do you ever clip the kick drum uh, or the drum bus at the ceiling? I... Sometimes in hip-hop, yes. But I usually find that the kicks are already clipped... Um, with the guys that want their kicks clipped, they usually send them to me that way. So, uh, if not, if it helps, yeah. Um, I can't remember which clipper. I, there's a Plug-in Alliance clipper that's my favorite. I think it's like Dent or some sh I can't remember which one it is, but uh, it's really dope. Um, oh, another big shout-out to Derek at IK Multimedia. Um, he, uh, uh, he put in my order for all these MTMs. I mean, I bought them, but he gave me a discount, so I appreciate it. Um, why is my mouse not working? Come on, Ken. I'm going to use the... Uh-oh. That... Oh, are we locked up again? I don't think Spraga Bounty is going to happen tonight, people. I'm really sorry about that. Um, let's see. Uh, I can't go to anything else because it crashed again. So... There must be a studio story, I can tell you. Um, uh, 
I'll give it 10 seconds and then boot it back up. So, uh, yeah, the, the Atmos stuff... Um, oh, yeah, I can go to questions, can't I? I can go to questions, that's why I got them, Ken. Um, what's the... Uh, Rick M. asks, Hey, Ken, what's the best way to glue the mix together? Rick M., the best way to glue the mix together is with great balances. I swear to God, that is the way. After you have great balances, everything else is so much easier. It, you know, when you compress and you're looking for that glue, it gives it to you because you've balanced correctly. When you haven't balanced correctly and you're looking for that glue to help fix it, um, you can't sometimes get it because... Uh, your compression is being driven uh, in ways that it doesn't like. Like, low frequency drives compression much harder than high frequency does. So, would you look at this face? Oh my goodness. Uh, so, if you have uh, an 808 heavy song and you're compressing the mix bus, um, it's going to... What the... It, it's going to drive a lot harder than if you have, like, a rock song that... Um, you know, doesn't have, it just has a regular bass guitar. Yeah, I think you get me. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see, what else we got? Uh, um, Tough asks, uh, Hey Ken, is it okay to hear some of the vocals on the side information when the side is soloed? Uh, um, not the reverb tails or the dry vocal. Um, Tuff says, I ask because I'm using certain vocal spreading techniques. The vocal is heard on the side, which I don't really hear on commercial releases. Tuff, you absolutely do too. Um, you, if you, there's a, a, a style of listening called A minus B, uh, listening. And, um, I can do it with the console real quick. I don't know if it broadcast. I don't think it broadcasts out that way. What the... Um, where is... Come on, watch. Uh, I'm not sure what's happening right now. Oh, that's what's happening. Um, sorry. There we go. So, while I have your attention and I'm booting things back up, I wanted to show you, uh... The Mixing Night Audio uh, webpage. We finally have a webpage. This is where you go to pre-order Greenhaus. Uh, you can hear listening examples. You can see Mixing Night stuff on here. You guys basically know what all this is. Pre-sale price is $39. Uh, I'm probably not going to sell it for less than $39. Bucks. I mean, if another plug-in company was selling this, it would be a $200 plug-in. We are bringing it to you for $49. Pre-selling it for $39. So... Uh, snatch it up now, and, uh, uh, I promise you're gonna fucking love this shit. So, here's the new website. I'm totally in love with it. Um, to the green hoss sign. Oh, this. Boom. I'm getting instructions from the booth in our high-tech communications. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yes. I'm a fan. Oh, here's nice things people are saying. Bob Horn, I was pretty much done with the mix when I installed Greenhouse, but I still got four instances of it on a mix. It has become one of my go-to plugins every day. Eric J, I just put Greenhouse on a, on a synth and it's like instant magic. All the things I would have done to it with the three, with three plugins and effect sends are happening all at once. That's a pretty great result within 30 seconds of activation. Eric J has mixed for Dua Lipa, Flume, Demi Lovato, Bob Horns, mixed for BTS, Usher, Michael Jackson. Uh, so that's that's the responses we've been getting. Uh, that's been pretty incredible. Um, let's see. Sorry, I'm a little uh, scattered due to crashes now. I am going to go to ear training. Okay, let's get that. Spraga Bounty doesn't work. Maybe ear training will. Um, okay, grab your ear training worksheet in the description below. If you haven't grabbed it yet, just click on the description, open up the PDF so you can follow along. So we are doing tonight uh, is what's wrong with this? Ken, what's wrong with this? So the objective is all of the yellow. You have to pay attention a little bit. All of the yellow files are dry. And then 
each of these different colors are two times through the same example. So example one, example two, example three, four, you get it. You got to follow along a little bit. Mazzy, you want a treat? Good girl. Okay, baby. And, uh, um, and you're listening for what changed, uh, what either got uh, removed or altered or distorted or panned or filtered or mutilated or in some way changed, you have to detect what changed and then you have to describe it. So if you can detect the change, that's one point. If you can accurately describe it, that's three points. So three points, nine examples, that's a total of 27. Um, let's see how you do. I really like this one. This is a fun one. And I'm using uh, Jod Sod Sophie on this, so you'll, you'll have a familiar song. Um, so the repeat of each thing is going to be the change. You have to identify the change. Here goes example one. All of the guys that I know gon' follow my lead All of the nights in a five-star New York home All of the guys that I know gon' follow my lead All of the nights in a five-star New York home All of the guys that I know gon' follow my lead All of the nights in a five-star New York home All of the guys that I know gon' follow my lead All of the nights in a five-star New York hotel room Where I stayed lonely Here comes number two for the shows I had on the hotel room where I stayed lonely Girl, you know you owe me For the shows I had on the hotel room where I stayed lonely Girl, you know you owe me Still number two coming up For the shows I had on the hotel room where I stayed lonely Girl, you know you owe me For the shows I had on the hotel room where I stayed lonely Girl, you know you owe me We broke up and you went straight out with the homie That's some shit that I could've had Broke up and you went straight out with the homie. That's some shit that I could've had. Tough, number three. We broke up and you went straight out with the homie. That's some shit that I could've had. We broke up and you went straight out with the homie. That's some shit that. Bottles of wine number in the trash when they used to be trophies. Bottles of wine in the trash when they used to be trophies. Bottles of wine in the trash when they used to be trophy. Bottles of wine in the trash when they used to be trophy. Now I gotta call someone else when I need you to hold me. Now I gotta call someone else when I need you to hold me. Now I gotta call someone else when I need you to hold me. No, I gotta call someone else when I need you to hold me. They graduated and moved up state of South Beach. All in the nights in the five star LA home. They graduated and moved up state of South Beach. All in the nights in the five star LA home. They graduated and moved up state of South Beach. All in the nights in the five star LA home. They graduated. Number seven. All of the girls that I let slip out of my reach. Na 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 na, yo. Oh me. For all of the girls that I let slip out of my reach. Na 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 na, yo. Oh me. For all of the girls that I let slip out of my reach. Na 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 na, yo. Oh me. For all of the girls that I let slip out of my reach. It almost broke me, Sophie. Here comes number eight. Oh, Sophie. Oh, Sophie. It almost broke me, Sophie. Oh, Sophie. Oh, Sophie. Oh, Sophie. It almost broke me, Sophie. Still number eight. Oh, Sophie. Oh, Sophie. Oh, Sophie. It almost broke me, Sophie. Oh, Sophie. Oh, Sophie. Oh, Sophie. Tell room where I stayed lonely. Nine. Girl, you know you owe me for the planes and the things and the time I did. All 
All right, one more listen through, and then the big reveal. All right, number one. All of the guys that I know gon' follow my lead. All of the nights in a five-star New York hotel. All of the one. guys that I know gon' follow my lead. All of the nights in a five-star New York hotel. All of the guys that I know gon' follow my lead. All of the nights in a five-star New York hotel. All of the guys that I know gon' follow my lead. All of the nights in a five-star New York hotel room where I stayed lonely. Girl, you know you owe me for the shows I had on the hotel room where I stayed lonely. Girl, you know you owe me for the shows I had on the hotel room where I stayed lonely. Girl, you know you owe me for the shows I had on the hotel room where I stayed lonely. Girl, you know you owe me for the shows I had on the hotel room where I stayed lonely. We broke up and you went straight out with the homie. That's some shit that I could've had on. We broke up and you went straight out with the homie. That's some shit that I could've had on me. We broke up and you went straight out with the homie. That's some shit that I could've had on me. We broke up and you went straight out with the homie. That's some shit that. Bottles of wine number four. What's wrong with this game? Used to be trophy. Bottles of wine in the trash when they used to be trophy. Bottles of wine in the trash when Number they four. used to be trophy. Bottles of wine in the trash when they used to be trophy. Now I gotta call someone else when I need Number you to five. hold me. Now I gotta call someone else when I need you to hold me. Now I gotta Number call five. someone else when I need you to hold me. No, I gotta call someone else when I need you to hold me. They graduated and moved up state of South Beach. Number All six. Of the nights in a five star LA hotel. They graduated and moved up state of South Beach. All of the nights in a five star What's wrong with that? They graduated and moved up state of South Beach. All of the nights in a five star LA hotel. They graduated and moved up state of South Beach. All of the girls that I let slip out of my reach. Na 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 na, you owe me for all of the girls that I let slip out of my reach. Na 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 na, you owe me for all of the girls that I let slip out of my reach. Na 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 na, you owe me for all of the girls that I let slip out of my reach. It almost broke me, Sophie. Oh, so number eight. Oh, so it almost broke me, Sophie. It almost broke me, Sophie. Number eight, one more time. What's wrong with this? Broke me, Sophie. Hotel room where I stayed lonely, girl. You know you owe me for the planes and the things and the time. All right, the big reveal. Did you get your answers in? Here's the answer sheet. So I'm just going to play back the first uh, one of these. Um, number one, the full mix collapsed from stereo to dead mono. Did you get it? All of the nights in a five-star New York hotel. All of the guys that I know gon' follow my lead. All of the nights in a five-star New York hotel. All of the guys that I know gon' follow my lead. All of okay, that's number one. Number two, there is a high-pass filter on the lead vocal at 900 hertz. Stay lonely, girl, you know you owe me for the shows I had. All the hotel room where I stay lonely, girl, you know you owe me. I would have accepted high pass filter on the vocal, telephone effect, anything like that would be an acceptable win three pointer. Uh, number three is um, the hi hats are muted. Man, it really, I had to study this one the first time we did it to figure out what was different about it. Number three, the hi hats are muted. 
That's some shit that I could've had on me. We broke up and you went straight out with the homie. That's some shit that I could've had. Number four, the piano it goes from stereo to panned hard right. Bottles of wine in the trash when they used to be trophies. Bottles of wine in the trash when they used to be trophies. Number five, the lead vocal is low passed or high cut at 1000. So I would take just a low pass or a high cut on the lead vocal. I would take filtered lead vocal, anything like that that accurately describes what's happening. I gotta call someone else when I need you to hold me. No, I gotta call someone else when I need you to hold me. Number six is uh, the vocal was turned down 10 dB. So uh, anything like a TV track or vocal, lead vocal turned down or, you know, lead vocal wasn't muted though. Of course, if you thought that was a lead vocal double, then that's acceptable. Um, okay, number seven is the right side of the mix. It just got muted. I just muted the right side. That's all I did. Oh me for all of the girls that I let slip out of my reach. Number eight, the mix bus is distorted. It almost broke me, Sophie. Oh, Sophie. Oh, Sophie. Oh, Sophie. It almost broke me, Sophie. Oh, Sophie. Oh, Sophie. Oh, Sophie. It almost broke me, Sophie. Got a little crunchy fuzziness on the mix bus. Here it comes one more time for you. It almost broke me, Sophie. And nine, the entire mix is out of phase. In fact, so the mix is coming up on the console. While it's playing, I'm going to just center the pan pots and the entire mix should disappear. Not sure if you could hear that, but anyway, okay, number nine, the entire mix is out of phase. So out of 27, how did you do? Post up on the chat roll and let me know. And uh, uh, Dom, if you're monitoring the chat roll, let me know who the, uh, the best score is and I'll give them a shout out on the show. Shout out to my friend Angelo Dodaro. He is such a badass. He really helped us grow the show early on for nearly a year. He's just a fantastic dude. Um, and I really need to reconnect with him. Um, I also want to tell you guys about my friend Cliff Sims. So I was telling you about Cliff earlier. He did his company, um, Telegraph Creative, did the GUI design for Greenhouse. But Cliff is like... Forrest Gump would be the best way to describe Cliff. Where's Cliff? Here's Cliff. So, I know, looks like regular Joe, you know, whoever. Cliff was the deputy director of the Central Intelligence Agency. That dude. And now I produce him. <laughs> Which I still find utterly ridiculous. But... Me and Cliff have been friends since long before his um, spy days, <laughs> and uh, and uh, Cliff used to play in rock bands, and he was a lead singer and a great songwriter, and we always wanted to work together back in the day, and it just never really clicked, but we were always good friends. And he got, um, uh, oh, MBI, nice. Um, and Cliff got out of music after two shitty major label record deal offers that were so terrible that they were untenable. He went into politics and went all the way to the top. You know, White House, CIA. Now he's getting back into music. And you're going to see me next Tuesday. You're going to see me flood my Facebook and my Instagram. Uh, Cliff is putting out his first single as a solo artist ever. 
and uh, I'm going to play you a little bit of it. It's the sweetest song in the history of songs. Uh, it's called You, Your Mom, and Me. And it's basically um, Cliff and his wife Megan uh, adopted um, a young son from uh, an orphanage in Columbia. And, uh, and Cliff started writing the song after he knew... I hope I get the story generally right. After he knew he was going to adopt a child, but had no idea who that would be, there were, you know. And then uh, the second half of the song is was written uh, after uh, they became a, a whole family. So um, there's the content behind this is so really amazing and captivating. I think it's such a special song that um, I had the real honor of producing. Uh, I'm just gonna play you like a minute of it tonight it's gonna come out officially on tuesday you're gonna see me blow up my socials please support it uh cliff is a really great guy and this is a really great song that could do some good uh you your mom and me cliff sims that's not it wait wait that's m nom here it is <laughs> A family never knew is coming for you, and it'll be more than you ever dreamed. I don't know where you are, but I pray you'll stay. There's no wall too high, no ocean, a wedding swim. A family never knew is coming to you. And it'll be more than you ever dreamed. Just you, your mom, and me. Just you, your mom, and me. Will be more than you ever dreamed. The song totally makes me think of Mazzy. Never in a million years. Never Mazzy King. You know the meaning of a home. And I will never leave you here. Never in a million years. Nope. You know I never leave the ones I love alone. In the day. Uh, that's all I'm giving you for now. Please support him on Tuesday. Cliff Sims, just like it sounds. Cliff is a great guy. Uh, we're going to be rolling out several singles. We have a great Christmas song that's coming up for Christmas. It's been so much fun producing him. And it's, I mean, so, you know, former CIA, former White House. But I've known him since, like, long before those days. And we've always just been friends. So it's really weird just, like, reconnecting with my old friend who happened to have this Forrest Gump-level fucking surreal life. And I've kind of had one myself. So he and he and I have the craziest fucking conversations about shit that's happened since the last time that we saw each other, which was I mean, we we talk all the time over the course of years, but you know, now we talk like several times a week. Um anyway, support Cliff on Tuesday. It's gonna be a great release. I'm gonna go to Marcus Manderson, mixing night, man of mystery. So Marcus uh is gonna show you um how he cooked up a beat. And all the techniques he used to cook that beat up for his uh, beat challenge starter tonight. So without further ado, our resident uh, man of mystery, Marcus Manderson, bringing to you live. Here we go. <laughs> What's good, Mixing Night family? This is Marcus Manderson, Mixing Night Man of Mystery, back with another Mixing Night Man of Mystery moment. And this Mixing Night Man of Mystery moment, we're going to dive in on how I created my entry into the beat battle. It's going to get kind of meta because it's my sample, and I'm flipping my own sample, but let's get right into it. Just to give you a refresher of what the sample sounded like, here it is right here. 
is I took that sample and I brought it into Logic Sampler. I added some Green Haas, uh, a little bit of both sides in there. Green Haas should be hopefully available for pre-order right now. You, um, I have the tempo at 172 and I actually changed the key to C minor. So here we go. And I converted it to audio because later on in the track right here at about bar 17, I wanted to raise it up an octave and it was easier for me to do that in Logic uh, as an audio file. And this is what it sounds like an octave higher. Next, I added drums from the Thaloops Pulse drum kit. Uh, I have Greenhouse on one of the kick sounds. So let's just go with the kick. Here's a kick right here by itself without Greenhouse. And with Greenhouse uh, layered on with the other kick. And then next we have the snare drum from the same plugin. This is the snare. Again, the snare has some fun green hot stuff going on there. I'm using these settings. Next, I added some percussion from the same plugin, also with green hoss on there. This is just the percussion. I have a uh, reverse symbol um, from the S1 kit. This is called the reverse symbol. Um, and then I have percussion from another plugin from the loops or the loops called Hortator. And again, green Haas on there. Play them all together along with the piano sample. Next, I added an 808 from the UBI Falcon. Lin Kuis actually gifted this to me. He won a beat challenge and he gifted this to me, UBI Falcon. This 808 mate preset using a Cymatics uh, Diablo Light, which is a free plugin to enhance the 808 here. <laughs> Next, I have some orchestral stuff going on. I have epic strings from Spitfire Audio playing some ostinatos. I also added uh, some tremolo strings from Expand 2. Next, I have some staccato from Spitfire Audio Grand Brass. This is what that plugin looks like. And here's that along with the strings. And then the second part of that, I actually have some uh, longer horns coming in. I have the Moog Model 15, a Moog or Moog, depending on how you want to say it. I have a synth thing coming in at the end. This is a plugin that you can get on the iPad, but they also have it on the desktop. <laughs> And again, Green Haas on there. Contact Glaze, it's a contact instrument uh, for vocal riffs and vocal runs. It has some incredible vocalists. I'm actually using a Sunarelle riff. <laughs> challenge. So here we go. I'm gonna play right from where everything sort of comes in there for a little bit. Here we go. So there you have it. This has been how I flipped this sample, my own sample for this beat challenge. This has been Marcus Manderson with another Mixing Night Meta Mystery Moment. Be safe and be well, everyone. All right, all right, peace. Marcus Manderson, Mixing Night Man of Mystery. Thank you uh, once again for serving up uh, a starter from your new beat pack, um, Dafinga's uh, beat pack. Let me see. I don't know if I have shit. Uh, all right, well, the fingers, beat packs, check them out. Uh, go to the Mixing Night Discord. I know he's probably got links to them um, happening up there. Uh, who else? We got, uh, wow, the chat rolls lighting up. Okay, um, let's see. BL asks, hey, Ken, I'm currently catching up on old shows. Very cool, BL. Has your opinion on Kamaru Usman, we're talking about UFC fights now, <laughs> Has your opinion on Kamaru Usman changed since you wanted Masvidal to knock him out last year? I, I always liked Usman, and I thought Usman would probably win, but, you know, I was hopeful Masvidal would do it. But 
Usman's finish of Mas Masvidal was absolutely spectacular. What a fight. It was really... Oh, man. I'm a big UFC fan. I think, to me, ultimate fighting is... You know, I don't, I don't like seeing people get hurt. But they're going to either probably fight or be in jail. Or, you know, be doing other bad shit. Some people are just born to fight. And <laughs> seeing these guys, you know, matching different skills against different skills. Um, and... Uh, is just a really incredible way to see uh, who's the best. So, um, yeah, I'm a big UFC fan. Ben Kruger asks, Hey, Ken, when do you use two compressors on a vocal? Almost always, Ben. Actually, almost never. It's usually three or four. Uh, hi, Ken. When do you use two compressors on a vocal? Uh, do you always put the fast one last as a limiter, or do you ever put the fast one first to tap down the peaks? Um... What determines that? You, I would say almost always I'm going slow first, um, and or slower. Uh, I wouldn't call it slow at all. Um, uh, but I would. I usually go compressor limiter. And when I say three compressors, I mean if I'm re if I recorded the vocal, then I used a compressor recording it. And then I'm using a compressor mixing it, and then a limiter probably as well um, is a pretty good bet mixing it as well. And I might use one or two or three de-essers as well. I might use one or two EQs. You never know. I'll definitely use Greenhouse. I mean, flavor. Uh, Ryan Hayes asks, Hey, Ken, do you ride vocals by fader or with uh, drawing the mouse? I rarely ride vocals. Usually I will split vocals off in different sections and then change the way that that section is either volume or EQ or effect or whatever. Um, if I am automating, it's usually just a graph draw, you know, grab a thing and move it up or down. Uh, usually I'm not getting into syllables and words and phrases like that. I'm getting into sections. Or sometimes you got to really automate like the turnarounds and the transitions so that you can hear everything that you're supposed to hear in a transition correctly. But for the most part, I try to minimize my usage of automation. Having said that, I have a beast mode computer with a shit ton of DSP, and I virtually can't run out of DSP. So for me to copy a lead vocal with nine plugins on it three times so I can split it off three times and treat it three different ways is nothing for me and might be really exceptionally difficult for you. So you kind of got to work within the parameters that you're given to an extent. And, you know, there you go. Oh, we're going to do the beat challenge results. Um... While I am firing up the beat challenge results, uh, uh, Noah Dorsey on the chat roll asks, Hey Ken, how do you go about matching timing for vocal uh, overdubs, uh, like doubles and triples, I guess? Um, do you use something like Revoice or uh, Vocal Line? Yes. Um, I use Revoice, I think that's Vocal Line 4. I don't know what I have. Um, <clears throat> but. I use it when I feel like I need it. I don't use it as a matter of course every single time. I use it when I hear my vocals and I hear, ah, you know, it's a little bit looser than I want. And then I tighten it up a bit because the more you correct background vocals, the tighter auto-tune is, the, the tighter the alignment is between uh, each part, the smaller your background vocals are going to sound. Um, so especially with the auto tune, alignment is kind of a hit and miss because you have to be really on, but basically what makes a chorus sound big with a lot of voices is the little micro differences that each of them uh, has against each other. And when you put all of those together, a lot of them, they just kind of nullify, you know, this one's slightly sharp, but this one's slightly flat, and these three are all in tune, and when you hear them all coming at you, they don't sound out of tune, they just sound like a big group of people singing, and that's usually the way it goes. Um, I hope I answered that question. Uh, uh, SFN Style asks, Hey Ken, how do you manage to protect your ears from tinnitus after 28 years? It's been 30 years in the business. Um, by not, uh, by not pummeling my eardrums with loud volume, if I'm going to, like the sprint mixes, I start the sprint mix loud for about five minutes. 
and it's not even stun loud, it's, but it's pretty fucking loud. And <laughs> I wouldn't listen that way for 30 minutes, but five is fine. And then you turn it back down. And the thing is, like, your ears can take good volume for short periods of time. What damages your hearing is either incredibly loud, sudden spikes, like putting your ear near a snare drum when a fucking drummer hits it, or a cymbal or some shit like that, or just the extended period of exposure, like during a concert or at a club or something like that, um, just wears the shit out of your ears. So if you go... Here, like, if you take a bar napkin, a regular bar napkin, and just dampen it, tear a, enough to put in your ear comfortably, and you just dampen it with your mouth a little bit, just get a little bit wet so it conforms to your ear canal, and don't get it so small that it gets stuck in there. Get a big enough piece to kind of, you know, but if you get it right and you get it uh, conformed to your ear... That thing will stay in there all night. It will protect your hearing just fine. I've been through entire concerts, long nights at the club with just bar napkins uh, in my eardrums, and I have no tinnitus, and I'm fine. Drink water before coffee. Lots of water. Uh, I also found this was fucking shocking to me. NSAIDs, like ibuprofen, can make your ears ring. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So, uh, so I can't take NSAIDs anymore. Fucking fuck. Um... So, yeah, they they won't necessarily make your ears ring, but they can. And it's not permanent, as far as I know, but, like, now, it never used to do this before, but now, if I take, like, a 800 milligram heavy-duty ibuprofen, my ears ring for eight hours. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? It goes away, and then they're clear again, so I can't take, I can't take any of that shit. So... Here's a word to the wise. There's a lot of antibiotics and NSAIDs and other um, medications that actually can cause tinnitus, either permanent or transient, you know, comes and goes um, uh, tinnitus. So you got to really be careful of what you're taking, and uh, um, especially with antibiotics and um, the, the anti-inflammatories. Uh, virtually all the anti-inflammatories are kind of in that same boat. Okay. Where am I? Beat challenge results. Okay. Um, so uh, we cooked up a Marcus Manderson Dafingas uh, piano sample pack one. I forget what it was called. I'm sorry, Marcus. I meant to. <laughs> I had it on Stream Deck and then it disappeared. Um, here, here's the starter sample that Marcus uh, served us up that you all made uh, beats from. And then I'm going to play the top 14 in a row. I've got them DJ style. And I uh, had a bunch of great submissions tonight. Here's the starter. I'm just going to go straight into Brian Pepin. Awesome job, everybody. That's what Marcus served up for us to fingers. Uh, and here's Brian Pepin. I know, right? These are in no particular order.
Franz Fritz. That was Elijah Walsh before. That 808 was crazy, Elijah. This is Franz Fritz. Josh Schultz, where's the artsy miss? We miss you. Come back. This is Hal Nine. Thousand. Wednesday and hey Wednesday. Bobby Thimgen. Two more to go. Step up. Tonight, Hakan Mainberg. some next level musicianship dude <laughs> that is really exceptional 
All right, there's the B challenge for you. It is time to call Mixing Night co-founder Dominic Dom Ravinius. Dom Ravinius. Uh, let me let me, shit. let me find him on Skype real quick. We're gonna bring Dom on a little bit late. Sorry about that, Dom. I know it's late in Germany right now. Can you believe <clears throat> Dominic is in Germany? And uh, we're just like chilling, gonna have a live conversation. It's like the middle of the night there. Where is he? He's probably asleep. There he is. <laughs> Dominic hello, Rabinius. Hello. How are you? Uh, do I need to launch uh, that audio movers link? Uh, for, yeah, do you have my mic? Um, your mic. You, you're hearing me talk, right? I am yeah, hearing that, you talk. That is part one. Don't, I'm giving you a little bit of my music and then, uh... Yeah, I need... Don't show the screen, sweetie. I need to find Dominic's link again. I don't know where it disappeared to. Uh, boo boo boo. So, Dominic, um, bef while they still can't see you... <laughs> yeah. Um, hang on. Uh, they can hear me. I can sing a bit. Yeah, you can sing a bit. So, we just worked on Alicia Keys and featuring Sway Lee... <laughs> Uh, yeah. How freaking awesome was that? Yeah, um, what was okay. I mean, it was okay. I mean, you know, as far as credits go, I guess big band is a good one to have. I right, mean, did you, ever, small band, but... did you ever like think one day I'm just gonna work on an Alicia Keys Sway Lee record and I'm gonna play big band music on it? Well, was that your dream as a kid? I, I did not expect to do it with you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not like I'm a big band leader. Yeah, right. Allegedly, yeah, although leader. although I do have a choir in my defense. So Dude, I have I have played in four big bands at a time. Well, you were uh, you were the right I guy to call to help doing... me with the gig then for sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, right, right. I love it. Um, yeah, and the last thing that that you and I did together that we had crazy credits on was Eminem. And I'm yeah. credited with orchestra, and your credit is percussion and brass? Yeah, uh, that is a crazy story. Like, uh, I, I feel I, I want to elaborate on that as part of a music industry, like, behind-the-scenes thing, because the official credit is brass and percussion, and that is what actually is in the booklet of the CD, which I have bought. Bought. You and me both, <laughs> baby. <laughs> right? And um, uh, everywhere else, like on YouTube, they have all the credits. Yeah. I went yeah. there the moment it came out. It said brass and percussion. Half an hour later, it only said percussion. Oh, really? So, yeah, I didn't I, know. I, they... I have no idea what what is <laughs> the politics behind that. But yeah, uh, they just robbed me of the like the. Uh, the most part of the work. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm here to confirm that you actually did create brass for that song. For sure. <laughs> and Yeah, as long as we know it. Yeah. Complete, and the Mixing Night community knows it. I mean, completely surreal to be working on Eminem shit. I mean, just... Even Dude, for me I, at this point, I, still... Absolutely. I mean, only only percussion. It, it doesn't really matter what... Right. what i did right, uh, it's an eminem song right. and an eminem I have, album i have a i have a small role on uptown funk yeah full stop i'm on uptown funk motherfucker right. i don't care right. if it's you know doesn't matter i'm on there baby i got that exactly. call <laughs> that is the exact same conversation as when people ask you um where where did you study or which college or which university uh, university did you go to like nobody asks you that when you say i worked on uptown funk that is the credential right not like the degree and that's like for people um wanting to go to college for this or maybe in college for this um i i went to berkeley college of music i graduated magna cum laude um <clears throat> And I had a great experience at Berkeley, but Berkeley is fuck all expensive. And if you can't afford that, then, you know, tune into Mixing Night. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, nowadays there's just so many resources, so you don't really need all of that. I don't know. Anyway. Um, yeah. So it's, we... it's just be, just being aware that the degree, even if it's Berkeley or a Musicians Institute from Los Angeles, that is... Maybe what opens the door in a conversation, but it's never what what actually brings you in the business. 
Correct. Yeah, my Berkeley stayed on my resume for a year and a half. <laughs> Magna cum laude from the most prestigious music school in the world. A year and a half later, I had so many credits that, and you know, the Berkeley got helped me get in the door to get those initial credits. But after I got the credits, it was just like, okay, nobody gives a fuck that I went to Berkeley. Everybody gives a fuck that I worked on this song. Oh, okay, right. that's how this works. And yeah. uh, and that's really the value of credits, right? Is like, right, you know, and they don't go away. Yeah, they... and to me, like when I a after the Eminem thing, I did something in Germany. I'm I'm in Germany, so I'm a German producer. And in Germany, it's the story of the century, like the German producer who worked on an Eminem album. I could, I could really work that story, even if it's I like, love it. I mean, yeah, it's it's a strategic move. And That's I did a lot yo. of podcasts and interviews on that. And <clears throat> what people always asked me in those formats was like, how do you get there? So this is exactly the conversation we're having right now. And I always said like, Educate, formal education, Berkeley, all of that is incredibly valuable when you understand that the actual value is in the connections you make there. Yeah. That is stuff that you take with you for your whole life. But if you don't go to college, still, if you're making connections, you're far better off than any Berkeley student who does not make any connections <clears throat> at all. Right. Yeah, it really is. It's all about the hustle in this business. Nobody owes you anything. Nobody owes you a listen or a gig or a mix or a production or a song or anything. You got to wake up every day and make it happen. And man, you've been doing that. Uh, the, the thing that you just made happen was a friend of the show, brilliant young artist, Gracie Wood. Yes. Um, uh, follow Gracie at Gracie Wood Official, please. She is uh, 17 years old. Um absolute i'm i uh, sprint mixed her song you ain't my boo uh last uh broadcast and we're gonna break down some of it this broadcast uh so phenomenal girl follow gracie at gracie wood official dominic produced you ain't my boo did a phenomenal job on it you mixed it as well great work yeah um so you had to Thank produce you. vocals from across an ocean how did that go right well that was like um it gave me confidence building this show, to be honest, because we worked with this question of how to make remote stuff work during the pandemic. That was exactly the big task we worked on when I was in New York with you. Yeah. Um, so I knew that there are possibilities that actually work really well. And I, Gracie went to a studio close to her and was a great studio. I don't know the name right now, but very very great competent loving people there it was just awesome to work with them nice. and she went there i told them um please set up your system with audio movers which is what i'm using right now to send you the session as well right that's how we're and, hearing you and um then i i told gracie put an ipad in front of you please and i'm gonna zoom you so we can talk through zoom while i'm hearing you through audio movers through the studio that was how we did it and then i gave her the di directions uh through zoom while i heard what she was doing in studio quality so they recorded at the studio and just sent you a stereo mix with a separate video feed and you're just basically the producer listening in real time as if you're basically on the other side of the studio glass That's, exactly yeah. it's almost that experience because i've been doing this too so i know how it is but it's it's almost that experience of it, that it feels like for anybody who's spent a lot of time in big studios, it feels like you're looking through the glass to the other side with the artist in the live room singing the song. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and the internet, if you have a fast connection, the lag time is so short nowadays. It's really incredible, right? I mean, look at the lag time here. I'm doing a live broadcast out. You and I are having a live conversation, and I'm hoping that it's streaming in decent quality. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. Really? Across the ocean. That is the, like, we are sitting in different continents right now. Right, yeah. This is... And it's it's 4 a.m. where I sit. So <laughs> this is the, the difference that we have right here. Shout out to MBI and all the... 
the UK people uh, around here and France and Belgium. There was somebody yeah, from Belgium you, today. So you guys are hardcore. Everybody is staying, staying up late tonight for the Green House pre yes. release. This is so exciting. And MBI scored a perfect score on the uh, ear training. Congrats, MBI. You got razor sharp ears tonight. That was a tough one. I think this is a perfect moment to say it the first time tonight how awesome this community has become like it has always been but it has i feel it has strengthened so much like it, it's getting more and more familiar everybody is like supportive there is no trolling in the chat at all everybody's showing up i, I love when everybody weeks, just right? ignores the trolls <laughs> troll comes yeah. in you know fucking lewis and nobody answers them i love you people well you usually can... that's me I mean... <laughs> well yeah that's <laughs> well i'll answer you i'll smack back on you but everybody else can oh, you always do <laughs> I, I i take my chances when i get them so that's... oh um yeah, so you guys, been... uh, if, if everybody's watching, if you knew what I put on his screen that <laughs> nobody else sees, like this is the the tiny like uh, you guys don't know what I that we're having. You don't, you don't, you don't know what I endure on this show. You don't know right. the hardships. Right. Anyway, right, he's getting all the support. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but our community really, I. It's become, like, especially Laurie and I talk about it all the time. It's become the thing that we didn't know that we needed. And, you know, like, we'll watch back the broadcast just so we can follow along with the chat and evaluate the show and see where we can improve. I mean, but right. the chat role is just so much fun to see, you know, what everybody's doing. And there are just so many killers uh, that follow this show. And the fucking beat challenges. What the hell, man? That I mean, is, that, seriously. That is really the other thing. Like, I never User was part of an audio what? community. That, <laughs> My watch I was never part me. of an audio community with, like, where everybody knew each other that closely. I mean, people are collaborating on the beat challenges right here, like MBI mm -hmm. and uh, Nora did something, Sam Champagne and Jason Lee, all right. of those <laughs> We're featurings. Cross, and cross ocean collaborations. And the the other thing was so I the last uh, broadcast during the fucking hurricane we were broadcasting during the height of Hurricane Ida smashing into New Jersey with tornado warnings warnings and we were broadcast that's how much we love you guys it was right. stupid but it was fun <laughs> this is so awesome yeah and the level of, of like really this is not like everybody who's watching is giantly talented i mean i was I, I, we have seen the beat channels from the start and i feel the, the community is like challenging each other so that, I, f much. I feel that like everybody just wants to see how well they can do like the brian pepin thing that i mixed two weeks ago during hurricane ida was 94 tracks he sh what? sent me the original session and it was i was like i heard the submission and i was like oh this sounds like one that i think i could mix live and improve and i'm thinking maybe 40 or 50 tracks and he sends it to me and it's 94 I'm like oh fuck i bit off more than i can right. chew but that's the kind of throwdown that's happening all right let's let's talk about mixing night audio because how the hell did we end up with a plug-in company via pandemic i mean <laughs> The I would have first off I never wanted a plug-in company I never wanted a plug-in uh -huh. and I don't know if you ever did but I think you and I got to talking and we were just like how do we keep the show going and we were thinking about educational stuff and we were just like nah it's getting crowded and we're already doing that <laughs> right we're doing mixing night this is the best this is education without trying this, this is the fun education. Right. This is right. the stuff that you I remember. Mean, I would I would totally not rule out to do like exclusive workshops, stuff like that, because there is oh, actually sure. valuable stuff like bringing in uh, outside people like Mark Fraser or people like that and have because that helps the community expand their knowledge, expand their success. Um, we're definitely talking about all of that behind the scenes. So oh, man. There's just so many ideas right now that you have to start somewhere, right? Well, the, the great thing is now that we have Green Haas, um, some of the sales of Green Haas are going to go towards funding and growing the show. And, I mean, 
we spend so much fucking time putting the show together and it still feels like we are scrambling every week and it's insane the amount of work that goes into it and now we're starting to get some help and if you know green Haas can lay the groundwork to really make the show into what you and i and Lori have always talked about doing uh right and it's this much fun already so oh. yeah everything grew out of the community thought really like Everything started with the community. Yeah. How do we Nothing keep this like, going? How do we grow it? Right. Right. And how do... Yeah. I, I always think, and we talk about this all the time, but it's maybe it's interesting for for the viewers to, to know what's actually happening. We talk all the time about idea. Like, we're reading your questions, all of them, even when they cannot all be answered in the show because there are so many. But we read them all, and like we can we understand what the recurring patterns are and what the right. recurring questions are and we constantly think of like not only answering them on the show but what could we put out uh, as a tangible thing that would actually help so many other people right. in this community like once and for all uh, and this is what what we're working on in the background and the plugin is one of them because yeah, green. it helps <laughs> Like Greenhouse Green is the House. cheat code. That is the straight cheat code. I can I mean, when you when when you and I and Lori set out to build that thing, I didn't think it was gonna come out this good. I had high hopes. But man, it just the whole our whole team is just so amazing. And Gary on the coding, he's been fantastic. Cliff doing the GUI. Everybody has just been top to bottom on this whole project. Really fantastic. And uh, the Bob Horn, Eric J. shit. Oh my God. Like <laughs> guys, guys, when you go to the Mixing Night Audio website, which I encourage you to do because we just put it out live today. It's such a gorgeous website. It we is. have spent months on that thing because the back end, like. All the programming that the licenses work when you register and you buy the plugin and then the server has to understand the license and give it back to you. And actually the plugin has to understand oh, no. so technical stuff going on. That's what takes so long. Like we spent months and today it came out, so go there after the show. Yeah. Go to mixingnetaudio.com. It's actually in the description as well. You don't even have to type it, you can just click the link. And and, and then get go to the greenhouse page. Yeah, you got to check the greenhouse page out. It's right. awesome. Check out what Bob Horn says. Check out what what uh, Eric J said. I mean, don't know these people. They worked on Demi Lovato, Dua Lipa, Flume, Michael Jackson, like BTS. names like that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And and the funny thing is raving. those the quotes that I have on the site they're not like I didn't ask them for like a hey can you give me a quote that's. That's pulled from their email responses, their first response back to me from their emails that they sent back. And then I was just like, yo, can I can I just grab excerpts of this and use it? And they're like, yeah, dude, this shit is... I mean, I'm so happy. Right. And hopefully... I mean, just, just, just today, can we, can we tell that, like the email with the 20 more licenses you asked me for, that just... Can we tell who that is? Like the institution? I don't thing? Is know. That... No, no. Okay, but we, we're, we're working not, on institutions. <laughs> yeah. We have... Basically, what I'm doing right now is... I'm kind of reaching out to all my like high-level mixing friends. Um, and just giving them licenses. Sorry for the people that have to pay for it. I really apologize. But, you know, that's kind of a perk of being a heavyweight. You don't need to... to you have so many plugins already that, you know... So I'm, I'm giving it out to, like, Bob Horn and Eric J. And, and you know, and, and people like that. And, and Andrew Wooper and the and uh, Ken Pooch Van Druten. And the response is back. Lord. I mean, you hope that people like it. But you don't ever expect people to completely lose their shit on their first initial reaction back to you, like 10 minutes after they get it. It's But it's been that visceral. I think we smashed this one, man. Congratulations, right. dude. We fucking smashed yeah. it. Uh, yeah, this is so fun. I mean, uh, I don't really want to keep going on. And going. I, I want to keep We're going grieving. on about the plugin all the time because it is really... Like, but let's talk is, about Gracie I, when, Wood. 
one more thing okay. because this is really important, um, or I, I feel it's important. Um, when so the plugin basically is completely 100% Ken's vision. Like it's taken from his workflow that he's using in productions and mixes, especially um, putting together usually a couple plugins, and we we thought maybe this would be cool in one box, and then we added a couple additional functionalities to that and what happened nobody knew how versatile this this thing would get i thought in the beginning i understood it and i used it like a utility box like solving a couple mixing problems that people encounter very often in a very very cool way that was my understanding initially right now it feels like it's like on the same level like an uh, rc20 which i just bought as well or one of these vibe plugins, which you just scroll through presets, and one of them is already the sauce. Yeah, I did the, never expect that. The, the the presets are bananas. I didn't expect to be able to use it just as, as effectively on a lead vocal or a drum loop or a hi hat or a bass line. Right. I was just right. like, what? And and have it like be my first choice of a lot of choices it has it has just wrecked my plugin list i don't even remember what i used to use for that shit anymore it's just the uh, right oh yeah right crazy I, I have replaced in some instances saturn 2 with that thing like pack yeah. filter saturn 2 or the decapitator sometimes a lot it's... of times actually greenhouses saturators I like much more for certain situations than these other heavyweight plugins. And that is like on the, Gracie Wood, I use it as well hundreds of times. The the thing that I notice the difference in saturators on say the decapitator is you have five choices below. The only one that ever sounds good to me is the first one. And with with Green Haas, all three of them sound really different and really musical and just super vibey. And you know very instantly which one works best for you. And right. The whole thing is, for those who uh, haven't picked up on this yet, there's no parameters on Green Haas anywhere. You don't know what the settings are. You don't know what it's doing. But it's designed that every single time you turn a knob or press a button or anything, it just has a great vibe to it. So you just have to determine what your favorite vibe is from, from that. And that's it. Right. Yeah, uh, that is what you preach all the time, like, let your ears guide the way. And that is the the vision that we had with this plugin and prob probably with all the future plugins as well. It's the definitely going to be a mantra of the company that you and I talk about all the time. And, you know, right. it's it's a, right. such a pro-level mentality that's such a simple thing for um, amateurs and hobbyists to grasp is just, you know... <laughs> Listen to the music and and don't overthink shit, and have right. fun while you're working. Like, how come we're the first people who really gamified a fucking plugin? I mean, yeah. I thought for sure after Lori did the initial mock up of Greenhouse, I started looking for other plugins out in plugin world, and almost nothing else out there is remotely like ours. And and Lori and I were just like. Oh, wouldn't it be cool if we had this fucking monster here and like a sundial? And... <laughs> it's right, really we have a growing monster plan. <laughs> Let me tell you something for for those people watching in uh, in uh, mixing land. Um, it's really fun uh, on the how does this shit work and what is it going to do and how to design it. That shit is so much fun in plugin land testing and coding and copy protection or and setting up the web store and distribution are all the fucking mind numbing shit but it's doing plugins is fun man we've had a blast <laughs> right and also encountering all the mistakes and the errors and like not figuring out what it is for weeks and trying stuff and it still breaks and apparently there's nothing wrong but it still breaks so. all, all things considered we've been really lucky because I think we have a great coder, and uh, and I have a bunch of good friends who own plug-in companies and who run plug-in companies who have been really helpful to us in sidestepping potential problems. Like Dave Dirt, Empirical Labs has given me great advice, and and who? Judy. Oh, and Judy Dirt. Judy's been giving Lori amazing advice on 
you know, we don't know shit about running a plug-in company. We're figuring this stuff out at the speed of light. Thank you to all of our friends who are showing us the way. Right. So, And to all of you who, who are very, like, who are giving us the time to figure all of this out, like we did with the show. I mean, the first show compared to today is like night and day. And it's the wow. same with building a plug-in company. And with everything, really. That, that yeah that we first show was broadcast in mono accidentally uh, <laughs> to 25 people our biggest show has been broadcast to 9000 people live uh our first one was 25 you grow things i mean nothing starts out the way you want it right right <laughs> so, i mean it, 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 imagine how the or remember how the first show felt for you like sitting there like all of the Oh my God, what's happening? And now you're just smashing the show and I love watching you and watching the chat and all of that and throwing you stupid comments on the screen sometimes. <laughs> oh my God. So for those that don't know, we started Mixing Night. Dominic was in uh, America on a business trip over in New York City and the lockdown happened and he couldn't get back to Germany. And so he stayed with us for, for three months and we were like... Oh, fuck. The world just stopped. What do we do? I got a bunch of cameras and broadcast gear. Let's do a show. It was originally called Q&A with Ken. For like the first 10 or 12 broadcasts, maybe more were, was Q&A with Ken, right? And then and we just were like, we're locked down. Let's do a show. So you spent three months with us doing a show. And then you had to go yeah. home to Germany and stay there. But the show was born of the lockdown. And I think the greenhouse is born of keeping the show going. Right. And all of that, not only the show, like all of the the tutorial videos that we put out on right. the channel as well, we all filmed that stuff when I was in New York, like 90 days. And we did not only work on mixing that, but we were this cranking. all happened in such a short period, man. That was it. It was really nutty. The output of work that, that we had while you were here. Mind blowing. And so much fun at the same time. I mean, the first four weeks was probably sorting out how to work with the pandemic because New York was kind of the pinnacle worldwide for that exact time frame. That was when people really got carried yeah. out of the hospital into like the cooling. Yeah, we uh, had cooler trucks. Um, you know, trucks Texas has yeah. them now. Yeah, New York City was the epicenter of the entire world when you were here. It was exactly. the most dangerous place to be in the entire world for COVID. <laughs> right and we were when staying locked the, the fuck down and that was also a time when every day there were new reports coming yeah, we like didn't know. suddenly people were losing their smell that was new back in the day that's true and remember we well, went we went one night in may to new york city at midnight to times square and it was empty and there was not a soul to be seen in any direction i have never in my life seen times square like that we went around to the Vessel and to Washington Square Park, and New York City was empty. Yeah. I, that was Guys, bizarre. Guys, on Times Square, there are tiles on the floor that have writing on them. <laughs> and you would never see that. <laughs> I, I think Ken yeah. said he never saw that, and then we took a photo right on the spot. Because always people there. I've never seen Times Square without people in my life, and I get out of sessions in Times Square three, four, five, six o'clock in the morning all the time. I've seen it with two or three people, but I've never seen it with zero people. It's, it's this fucking right. pandemic, man. Please, right. everybody, get your damn shot and mask up. God. But we it gave birth this. to all of this thing. Like, up until today, the pre-release of Greenhouse, everything was born it, it because really, of this. It would have literally never happened. We never would have done Greenhouse, probably or the show, without the pandemic. So... Right. You know, that you was the beginning. But what, make what lemonade. To, to, to make it to go full circle with it, just what keeps it going. I mean, this is what what started it. But what keeps it going is really all the people showing up again and again and in between shows, interacting on Discord, doing their beat challenge stuff. And like whenever we bring something new to the table, people adopt it and they jump on there like just Early on the chat, when I was monitoring the chat, which I'm not doing right now, um, Steppo had an insane idea. He he said, like, did you think about making a greenhouse preset challenge? And then <laughs> I love finding, that. finding the coolest um, uh, presets and implementing them uh, in an update on the on a on the plugin. 
Of I'll... course we're going to do that. <laughs> I love that. Thank you, Stefo. And this is the That's... community. I mean, guys, I... Mixing Night Audio is a community and not a company. It, like, that this is, is true. How, how I feel about it. Totally. Totally. Yep. It's, uh, it's, it's, man, it has definitely become the thing that we didn't know we needed, for sure. Um, so, cool. so, so thank, we can't tell them. everybody. Yeah, thank you, everybody, for sure. Uh, um, so we can't tell them what the next plugin is, but we de- What's that? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not telling him what the next plugin is. <laughs> I love that. But we have one already designed. I love it. It's going to make you laugh. Just like Greenhaw. There. So uh, stay tuned for that. I don't know when. It's not going to be before Christmas. My God, it's so hard to put plugins together. But the second one, I think, is going to be much easier than the first. Uh, we've we've done a lot of the heavy lifting, so, um, right. and but you know, hopefully we'll get some support. If we sell a lot of greenhouse, then we'll put out another plug-in. That's kind of how that works, and we'll keep doing the show. Right. So, right. Um, uh, what else do we got to cover? It's kind of getting late. Do you want to play some Gracie uh, uh, Wood stuff? Well, I would. I don't want to uh, stretch this too long, but what Man. I would suggest is I would maybe show one or two cool tricks that people don't get in like the common YouTube tutorials, but that will actually make a giant impact for, for production. So uh, let's take five minutes if you're cool with that. I mean, Absolutely. you can take a look at the chat if people want that. Okay. Um, and, and if we uh, want to do that, let's do it. Let, go, go, I, go. I, Without further do ado. Have, do you have the... Um, uh, Audio movers unmuted? Yes. There we are. That is Gracie Wood, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> 17 um, years old, voice like an angel. So really quickly, this is the production session. Um, he, here is something I just wanted to lay out for everybody who is always wondering how pop songs or songs on a high level are made, like as far as what to do first, how to structure stuff. So... When I create a song, I'm I'm having a production session where I do the instrumental. I am having a vocal recording session in which I also comp the vocals because the tracks are already in there. Then I have another vocal arrangement session for all the ad-libs, doubles, right, left, and all of that. Those are three sessions. And then the fourth session is a pure mix session for me. I know Ken uh, mixes while producing a bit. That is because he probably worked on 10,000 more songs than I have. Uh, but for me, this is like the best 9, strategy 000. to go. <laughs> I just wanted to uh, do that and get that out of the way. So this, what you're seeing in a couple seconds, uh, let me share my screen. Hopefully it works. Um, is the production session. So the, the instrumental creation. You should now see my screen. I see it. Okay. So I lay it out just just like you always say, like drums, blue at the top, percussions, basses, purple, then everything else. Like everything color coding and, and ordering is always the same across sessions for me. Um, and what I want to show you is, let me show you the idea of that song. Like this is the very basic idea of the instrumental thing, like. I think because we're tight on time, you should show that signature string thing. Right, I... that is exactly what I want to do. The I just want to go from the, the first idea is just those. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, like always having something, then leaving space. That is something I wanted to to really stress. And um, without talking about all the arrangement stuff that I could show on here, um, there's not so much going on in this song as far as instruments. So you have to ask yourself, how do I still get interest 
in uh, between for, from one section to the next, like from the verse to the chorus? How do I make the chorus stand out even though the song is like more like mellow and vibey? Uh, and that can be a challenge. So let me show you one thing I did here. And that is something you can totally copy. Um, you see all those orange areas right here i guess yes. right all everything i have marked right now this is all the same like those down here are exactly the same things as here is just uh treated copy paste differently. yeah okay yeah so those are the strings in this song let me play you those strings so you hear them turn those up a little bit Okay, um, yeah, so, and in the chorus, they appear again. Let me show you how they sound there, and then let me show you why and how I did that. Much brighter and less filtered. Yeah, and if you're listen to, listening to that with headphones or on, on uh, studio speakers, you're also here on the chorus. There is a movement going on from left to right. So this is one thing um, that I have found having recurring themes across the song helps people understand, okay, this is the idea of the song. There is not 500 different things going on. There is This string pattern is really one of the main themes of the song. And what I did in the in the verse, let me pull in the the vocals. Um, I I wanted to have that there just to bring interest on the what is it the uh, the pre-chorus here. Man, it's turned up super loud right now, but that super loud string is tucked way back and super vibey. Right. Yeah, I have it automated. So, yeah, I have it to the uh, right uh, volume again right here. Um, what I did with this is this is what they sound like without the treatment. So, and now when I go ahead and actually put in these things one by one, you see what they do. Uh, little Alter Boy just gives a little bit of nothing. Ha! Huh. Nice, I didn't even need that. Um, Wires is one of my favorite plugins right here. Is that audio thing? This is audio thing Wires. This, this is a Russian cassette player. Yeah, that thing is wild. And this is the vibe of the sound, right? And everything, all I do right now after that is really just uh, um, carving and uh, mangling the, the the sound with EQs to make well, it a little more. Well, let's hear. Yeah, some music cue here, the Illusia from the Plugin Alliance bundle. Um, little Kramer Pi to pull the whole thing a little, uh, up in the mix. Uh, always good. And the Pro Q2 just take, getting rid of the top, getting rid of the bottom, and a little bit of this nasty. I can't see that. Why not? I don't know. I can see your logic. I can't see the Pro Q2. Oh. Okay. Um, yeah, it's still just chafed off from the bottom and from the top, and one nasty frequency in the middle uh, like frequency. That. So it's just, it's basically just um, getting the song to the sound to the finish line. But when you go to the chorus, this is the exact same chain in the uh, you see the inserts here right um yeah. without just wires? the audio thing just the audio thing wires is 
uh, bypassed and everything else is the exact same thing. So that is what makes it go open. So, so yeah, uh, wires so isn't wires is another one of those vibe boxes. Absolutely. One of those things absolutely. You only yeah. reach for it if you want to turn vanilla into gold. That's the same with greenhouse. Right. Right. Absolutely. You probably could have used greenhouse to get a vibe for this thing too. Oh, I for just, sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I use wires because that is kind of a very quick go-to for me as well. And then I just added the Brower Motion. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. It's another Waves uh, plug-in there. Yeah, can't for some see reason. it, but it's like an auto panner. It's a multi-auto panner. Yeah, and that is the only difference between between the um, verse and the but, chorus. But the thing that I love about the part itself is that it's not like some string pad being played on a keyboard off of a you know a patch it's it sounds like some live string players playing some really emotive live part that uh, sounds unique and to me sounds signature and you've taken that and you've modified it further to make it even more unique and fit into your own production in a way that uh you know, nobody else has that sound. You're the only one who's got a song with that particular sound doing that in it. And, you know, and that lends a certain amount of signature credibility and uniqueness to your productions. And I'm always trying to do the same thing. Um, so kudos on that. Yeah, that that is exactly right. Let me play you this. This blog right here is the original sample. And then let me uh, say two more words on what you just said. That is all. Like, there is no, no more to it. So this is only half the length of the actual sample. I and you it. can see the, the chops here. Um, I right, have chop chopped the sample up and then put it together in a different way. And this is the other part of the, the string loop that you cannot hear at all in the sample because it's not there. Uh, wrong. Yeah. That's where you use Little Alter Boy as you pitch that one down. Uh, I, I pitched both of them down, actually. Gotcha. Just not the bus here. Oh, I see. Um, but yeah, I, I created a melody that was not there from a sample that is only half of the thing and not even in the exact way. And then I took that sound and put it through all those... Uh, boxes that you just saw so this is a way to take a real sample you can do it with everything like drum loops uh horn sections everything take the loops chop them up uh create new melodies with them and then go ahead and create different sound palettes than they would usually represent i love it well we're running okay. late on time um, Absolutely. Let's... One very quick. Let let huh? me do one quick tip because sure. this is. Sure. What uh, else you got for us? This is the the small bonus thing, and then we're gonna wrap it up. So please listen to just those four bars of the chorus right now, and I'm gonna mute and unmute one track, and then I'm gonna tell you what it is. You can probably read what it is, but I'm gonna show you this. You gotta emphasize it more. It's hard. It's hard. So, to uh, what what is happening here is I have just a water texture behind this thing. This is what I have behind the chorus. This is water. Turn it up from a sink, like that. Yep. So that's a pad going on under your whole production in the chorus. Uh, the chorus, and that is what makes the chorus so big. Listen to it with it and then I mute it and you hear what what is missing <laughs> you fucked up the automation now just it's just not gluing that well without it right and it's like uh this... tape hiss i add tape hiss to productions all the time because it's like glue when something is a little bit too sterile 
a little bit of that white noisy stuff, and that's that sounds like what you're doing. It's just that water is like white noise. It's like tape hiss right. or, you know. Right. And it's what it's what really subtly sets apart the chorus from the verse because you can see right here. I'm I'm uh, highlighting it here. Those parts are only the chorus. Uh, Chillin' is... 24-7 is asking, did you use a rolly to make that string part? And the answer is no, he doesn't have a rolly. But I have a rolly, and I use my rolly to make string parts all the time. That is true, but uh, to add to that, somebody else uh, played this string part in... Uh, this is a sample. This is not uh, a VST. Right. This is actually from a sample pack. Right. And I took right. the audio and chopped it up. So this is a real string player. This is a real rolly. <laughs> for, those who, for those who don't know what a rolly is, this is a rolly. One of those black rubber keyboards. This gets you all the in-between notes. You can play violin on this. Like, it sounds like a virtuoso violinist is playing. It's bananas. Like, the brass and strings on that are just crazy. And it does all sorts of other things. Anyway, sorry. Right. <sighs> um, yeah, I could show 500 more things on this session maybe another time but i'm starving uh the screen share right now because i think for tonight this is enough to take away otherwise head's gonna explode yeah. because it's going so long oh my goodness um, but it has been a great night i loved it it was yeah. very fun thanks for having me on oh it's great to finally have you as a guest on our show <laughs> <laughs> right i i never like, I had the impression I was already on there because we all always test the, the tech Right, how together. were you not on the show in New York? That seems unfathomable. Like, how did we right. not do that? I don't know. Anyway. We, we, we didn't know what we are doing. Yeah, we've been, this has been a learn. it's still a learning process. You guys have no idea how much of a learning curve this shit is. Oh my God. Anyway. We're tackling it. Uh, Dom, it's been great to have you on the show. Congratulations on the launch of Mixing Night Audio and Green Haas. Woo! You too, man. Thanks it so has much. Been a this is so exciting. Long time coming. So uh, anybody still tuning in, if you haven't pre-ordered it yet, you know what to do. And uh, I'm going to sign off of Mixing Night now. Dominic, uh, it's great to see you. Uh, it's late, late, late in Germany. Thank you for staying up late with us once again. And uh, I will talk to you tomorrow and to our entire awesome, fantastic Mixing Night community. Uh, I will see you over at the Mixing Night Discord channel in between shows. And tune in September 29th when the actual official launch of Greenhouse happens. Ah! And, um, uh, we're going to launch a new beat challenge on the 29th. We're going to give away a bunch of really awesome Arturia stuff. Uh, so <laughs> so uh, uh, the, the September 29th show is going to be a big one. Um, Green Haas will be available. Arturia. Man, we're going to have a throwdown. It's going to be fantastic. Join us in two weeks. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. For me and Dominic and Lori and Gary and Cliff and everybody in the Mixing Night community, uh, have a great night, and uh, we will see you guys all soon. Have, take care. Right. Thanks so much for hanging out, everybody. Bye.